Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Recipe for Reality Small Bites, where I take a topic in the survivor realm and break it down in a top 10 or otherwise stated ranking video, um, or podcast, I guess, since you're not actually looking at me speak. Um, but this week's topic, and this is one I've been kind of brewing around for a few weeks now, I'm trying to figure out exactly which ones will make the list, because this is a list that requires knowledge of every single episode of the show, and that is the best challenges ever in Survivor history. Like I said, I went through every single challenge of the show's 46 season run now um, to find the ones that I like most. And I kind of went with the overall um, challenge as a whole. So for example, if a challenge has been used in many different seasons, you know, I'm not going to necessarily say like, oh, the challenge specifically from Borneo or specifically from this or specifically from that. Um, I'm kind of talking about the challenges in general, but I am going to give some specific examples because some of these challenges are one-offs and because of some of these challenges are more iconic in some seasons than others. Now, there are challenges that I think are like very much ingrained in the commonplace of Survivor where we see them every season and some of them I like, some of them I don't, but I feel like my list is much more um, specific to me and my personal enjoyment, my personal tastes. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to start with some honorable mentions. The first one being the very first challenge, Quest for Fire from Borneo. I believe they did it again in Cambodia as part of the second chance season. I mean, this is just fun because of the iconography of it, um, because it is so bare bones, so stripped down. I mean, there's a lot of challenges from Borneo and from these early seasons that actually did make my list because I think the kind of rawness of those challenges, the fact that they really don't have many kind of tricks and turns and twists and obstacles, it's just kind of straight up and straightforward. I think that actually makes for a much more fun and dramatic challenge sometimes uh, because it can solely be about the teamwork and just who has the perseverance. Um, but I did not ultimately put in my top 10 because it's not the most memorable of those original challenges. Another one that I think is very iconic, um, but one that just I have trouble watching whenever it's on is Breathing Room. This is the one where you have to hold your breath under the grate um it is fun to watch for a period of time and then it gets a little too anxiety inducing which is why i wouldn't put it in my top 10 also because we've now seen it so many times to where i feel like it doesn't really offer much newness every time we see it every time you see this challenge it is pretty much the exact same except for that one season in i believe 43 where the tide actually went back down and jeff kind of called the challenge off and, and proclaimed that multiple people had won but even then it's still the same design the same structure the same challenge and i find that that's one of the hardest ones to kind of um, manipulate and change over time so it didn't make the list another one is battle dig uh we see kind of iterations of this battle dig challenge in a lot of seasons the most memorable one for me is heroes vs villains where you know you have to go run and dig up something and then bring it back to your map but then other people have to try to tackle you um there are other challenges like that where you have to kind of use a you know ball and kind of pass a ball through water anything that involves the other tribe kind of trying to tackle you and stop you um, it's very entertaining but it also gets kind of dangerous gets kind of messy um, but that first heroes vs villains challenge is the one that especially comes to mind that i really love another one is rock and roll this is one that I remember I think from Survivor Africa with the really big boulders any challenge where they're pushing through a huge boulder uh, I think of the one with you know um, the person inside uh, the boulder which they kind of do nowadays where someone's inside this big contraption this big ball and has to kind of direct people who are blindfolded anything where you're kind of pushing these big boulders through an obstacle course is really entertaining for me but it did slightly miss out um, then we have you know one that I think is um, a fun uh, endurance challenge especially when it gets to, like the final three or final four and that is Broken China. Uh, this is my favorite of those like late game uh, endurance challenges where you're like stacking something or you're building something. Um, you know, we see this with card towers usually in the early merge phase. Uh, but Broken China is the most fun, I think, because the stuff you're stacking is so delicate. Like the idea of stacking up these like plates and these cups and these teacups is actually very nerve wracking. So whenever I see this as like the final endurance challenge, it's always the one that feels the most high stakes for me. One, one challenge is not going to end up on this list is Samotion, the one where you have to drop the ball in and the ball goes through the contraption and then you have to catch it on the other side. That one is just so boring to me because we've seen it so, so, so many times that when we get back to like the stacking of the plates, for me, that always still feels fresh because of the danger, you know, because I'm also a server in New York City. So like there's that extra pressure of like having to carry plates out to tables and not wanting to drop anything or, you know, let anything break on the way to the table and having balance. I mean, that is something that I can relate to. Um, another one, which I really love, especially 
especially when you bring loved ones into it, which is firefighter. This is where one person goes to the ocean and grabs a bucket of water and then has to like transfer to another person uh, by tossing that bucket of water. And sometimes there's like a hole in the bucket. Um, this one, especially also from Heroes vs. Villains, is memorable because of the Colby Donaldson and his brother Reed interaction where Colby's like, damn it, Reed, come on, Reed. Um, that is a great moment, but I think that challenge is really fun because it's also fun to see people soak others with water and them get really pissed off at one another. It's one of those challenges that could lead to a lot of infighting, which I think is fun. Another one that is iconic because of the circumstances of the season and how long it went on is Bob, uh, sorry, Bob, Bob Bowie, Bob, Bob Bowie. Yep. That's, that's how you call it. Uh, Bob, Bob Bowie from survivor Palau. This is the obviously famous one where Tom and Ian went hours and hours and hours on the buoys to where Jeff was getting nervous that they were going to get off schedule because they had to have a tribal council. Um, and then Ian ends up quitting, but this is iconic. I think because of the moment more so than the challenge, the challenge is pretty simple, just people on buoys in the water. But again, there's something about the endurance aspect of it that is very entertaining because it shows that sheer willpower that those two guys had and then lastly one that i really wanted to put on the list and honestly if it had been on the list it would have been number one but one that just didn't feel right to put in the challenges sphere because it's not really a challenge it's more so an activity that involves rewards and prizes but is not necessarily something that is competitive in a way i guess it is but i did not put the survivor auction on the list only because i feel like it's not in the spirit of this list because this list is much more about the challenges that we see every season that you can win immunity or win reward by you know starting and finishing or in terms of endurance outlasting whereas the auction is just its own kind of animal in and of itself but if the auction were on, on this list um it would have been number one just so everyone knows so it's like a very honorary number 11 on this list but uh, my top 10 are the ones that i think are probably if you were to ask me what are my favorite challenges i would say these 10 uh the auction didn't necessarily come to mind but the more i thought about it i was like is it a challenge is it not uh because of you know, the ambiguity of if it is a challenge or not, I decided to leave it off. But getting into my top 10 challenges, and again, these are personal, these are subjective, these are the ones that I'm most excited, and that if every season had this challenge, I probably wouldn't get tired of it. Number 10 is a very unique one, a very niche one, which is the SOS signal challenge. And this is where, um, the castaways would basically have to create these big symbols for planes up in the air to see themselves uh, to help rescue them. I think this is a fun challenge for a few reasons. One, because it really adds to the teamwork element of it, um, and it really doesn't require any skill. Like, you can be the worst challenge performer. You could be a Brandon Donlin from season 45, but you can be the best one in this challenge because all it takes is really creativity, and there are very few challenges on Survivor where it is a subjective, kind of creative-based challenge. A lot of challenges are you either complete this challenge or you don't or you outlast last the others or you don't this one is purely up to subjectivity of who can create the best symbol to get the pilot's attention to rescue you and the second reason i really like it is because it kind of brings in that atmosphere of the idea of being stranded at a camp i think often in survivor especially modern seasons we kind of lose track of the fact that this is still about people surviving on an island and i think we've become so separated from those original early days of, of survivor that it's become more so about about the gameplay and the strategy and the social interactions which is important but i think that survivalist aspect is something that's really hit on early in a premiere episode usually with building shelters but then really isn't brought into the game until later on when people are like starving because of rice or have to build fires but really the survivalist aspect is what makes this challenge unique i think it's fun to see everyone kind of work together and have these ideas of oh is this going to garner attention if we light a fire or if we spell out sos with these logs you know i think it leads to a lot of creativity and i think if they were to do this every single season i think this is one that you could feel um could not become stale because there's always interesting ways to kind of mold this challenge and do it different every time at number nine is one that is kind of a very 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 niche one that hasn't been seen on any other challenge but guatem on any other season but survivor guatemala and that is the 11 mile hike i think the reason why i love this 11 mile hike is because it's very simple you're basically just hiking to your camp but it is a true test of the endurance and the elements and working together because you want to carry all this supplies you want to carry all these things and it's all about how much willpower you have to carry everything as far as you can before you have to set it aside and let it go um, because as the hike went on people started you know leaving stuff behind or passing off stuff to other people who could carry heavier loads it really is a team building challenge um but in this survivor season guatemala specifically the way the heat you know plays a factor in this challenge it's a very dangerous challenge people are passing out people are getting dehydrated you know you're walking through 11 miles of jungle and i think we just don't see challenges like that anymore where people are just in the elements and the challenge is just to get through a woods um get through a jungle and i think that's just a very 
simple challenge, but a challenge. Challenge is in the name. I mean, that's why they call them challenges is because they are challenging. And I think the 11 mile hike is one of the most challenging uh, challenges ever. And I think it's cool that it's on season 11 where we have the 11 mile hike. Imagine nowadays if it was like Survivor 47, you're going on a 47 mile hike. Uh, no, they wouldn't do that. But I do think this is kind of what we see nowadays with like the sweat task where you have to go back and forth, you know, bringing, you know, sand or water from one place to another. But again, it's it's in one contained place where I think the 11 mile hike is interesting because everything changes. If you go a mile, the terrain's going to be a little bit different than it was a mile previously. So I really like the 11 mile hike, especially because it's a first challenge and it really does test everyone's, you know, abilities right out the gate. It shows who the strong people are without any cracks, without any room to hide very early on. There's no sit-outs here, um, which I think is very, very interesting. And number eight, another one that is just so fun just because it's funny. It's fun to watch, which is Slither Me Timbers. Um, there have been some iterations of this one, but the one that it stands out most to me is Millennials vs. Gen X. This is the one where basically your hands are tied behind your back and you have to kind of like wiggle your way through this obstacle course and going over these hills of sand. I specifically remember Adam Klein doing this. This is one that I just find a lot of enjoyment in. You know, I like watching this challenge because I like seeing these people squirm and kind of shift around. I, I just think it's hilarious. I, I think it's a hilarious challenge and it gets me every time. And number seven, for a very similar reason, is pilfering pirates which is the attack zone challenge from survivor thailand uh this one there have been iterations of this similarly in other seasons but the attack zone from survivor thailand is the prime example of the greatest iteration of this challenge which is you have to get something from one end to your end um without the other tribe knocking you into the water but if you are both within the attack zone you can literally push each other off and the best thing about this challenge is the comedy that comes from people like clay people like rob a back nick uh, all these people who are clearly not understanding the rules and are still attacking the other people and pushing them in the water and i think clay or rob or both of them grab each other by the neck and jeff probes is like no no guys hands off you guys are out of the challenge and i love how it's not even a warning it's not even a warning and then you're out with jeff it's just if you break the rules you're out and i think it's always fun when jeff gets to reprimand the contestants so i think the survivor pilfering pirates is always a fun challenge to revisit in a season i really hate i really don't like survivor thailand it's probably the only season i avidly dislike even though i do rewatch every season every year i really don't like survivor thailand but the attack zone is a highlight of that season and it's a shame it comes so early because it's such a fun challenge at number six uh is any real survivor eating challenge i went with uh, the real title for it which is survivor smorgasbord really anytime anyone eats something disgusting it's always fun i mean this is what you think about when you think of classic survivor and i think this is again another challenge where you could be the weakest guy or the strongest guy and you can win this challenge and i think of cochran in particular being able to just like beast through this challenge even though he's like the scrawny little guy um and then i think of like the best example being like survivor china where Den Denise and James are shoving bats uh, in their mouth or whatever, and Denise has that amazing, iconic moment where she's trying to stuff it down, she can't get it down. I mean, it's gross for a lot of people, but for me, it's just so fun. I love this uh, challenge. It's so, uh, so entertaining. Um, moving on to number five um, is one that we saw this season in Survivor 47, or sorry, 46. Uh, it's the famous one that we saw Hunter kind of do this crazy back bend off of, which is Get a Grip, which is the one where you basically climb a pole and you have to grip on. And what I like about this challenge is that it is very simple. You're just holding on to something. But I think you know, every season I've seen it, it still feels fresh, I think because of the different approaches taken. Like for example, if you're gonna really cling on with your arms or if you're gonna cling on with your feet. Um, but I think the most interesting element of it is the sass between the people who are out of the challenge and the people in it. Um, I always love the commentary of Jeff making the comparisons of like, you know, Ozzy lasted this long. Can you beat Ozzy? Can you beat Ty? Can you beat Parvati? And I mean, there's an amazing shot of Parvati literally hanging off of the pole with one arm and one foot. And then in this most recent season, Hunter kind of doing that back bend. You know, I, I always feel like it adds to some really fun ego moments for the castaways for get a grip and i think of the endurance challenges except for a few more that are a little higher on this list in the number four and three slots i think this is one that particularly doesn't necessarily get stale because i think a lot of endurance challenges specifically we care more about the people in the challenges than we do the challenge themselves um but i do think get a grip still because of just the very simple format it's just holding on to a big pole you know and the danger aspect also about being very high up in the air i think it adds to some fun moments every season it's on number four 
for a real, real simple endurance challenge, and I think the reason I love it so much is the simplicity and the idea that the person who originated this challenge really gamed this challenge to the best of their ability, which is Hands on a Hard Idol from Borneo um, that we saw a few other iterations of, obviously, in the history of Survivor, but this is like the OG. Um, this is the one where, you know, Kelly, Rudy, and Rich all put their hands on an idol, and whoever had their hands on it last wins. And I think what's so fun about this is that it is a very simple challenge, yet Richard was totally able to game it because he said, you know what? I need Rudy out, but I can't cut Rudy. So I want Kelly to cut Rudy and I know Kelly can beat Rudy. So instead of myself having to be the bad guy and send out Rudy, instead I'm going to take my hand off because I know Rudy's going to take me if he wins and I think I can still beat Rudy. And if Kelly wins, she's going to cut Rudy before she cuts me. So I'm guaranteed final two no matter what. And I love how Richard even says it. You know, he he's not very, you know, shy about his strategy he literally says he's like both of them are taking me to the end so i don't need to win this challenge and i think at the time jeff and production probably got a little pissed but i think they were realizing that the game was kind of molding itself and shaping itself into something they couldn't even imagine um in that very first season thanks to richard hatch so i definitely think this season is iconic for all those reasons um and i would love to see them bring it back now in a modern iteration because it is so simple because it is sh sheerly willpower and just the trusting of can the other people can you rely on them to take you to where you do not have to hold on? And I honestly think that's why Big Brother is so successful when the when they get to the final three because it's a very similar premise of do I want to win and have to make the decision or do I have the faith that the other two people that can win are going to take each other out so I don't even have to try and it adds to some fun strategy. But nowadays we don't see a final two on Survivor very much except for like what, like Kageyan and I guess you could say Ghost Island but even then that was more unconventional because it was a final three that became a final two. So, uh, you know, it, it's not something I don't, I, I think we'll see very often again if ever um but i would love to see it make a return if we are to ever get a final two again or if we're ever able to get rid of the fire making challenge which i also think isn't going anywhere which is also spoiler alert not on this list because again it's getting pretty stale and pretty tired but number three another endurance challenge is the last endurance challenge on my list but this one is my hands down my favorite endurance challenge which is when it rains it pours it's the one where you have one arm up in the sky tied to a bucket and if you let your arm down the bucket comes down too and what i love about this challenge is that they have molded it every time they bring it back for one season it was you just have to hold your arm up there another season it was you can't use your other arm to support that arm you literally just could use that one arm the other one is uh you know you then had to start standing on a perch i feel like they always find ways to kind of innovate this challenge and make it harder and harder every time they do it but i think just the very bare basic premise of it is so fun where if you drop your arm you're getting soaked by water so it's kind of fun in that way in similar ways to like a dunk tank at a carnival like you just love seeing people get soaked i don't know why but it's just so funny because these people are obviously starving they're miserable and to see it happen especially to some of the more villainous figures of a season for example is really fun and then the, my favorite iteration of it is survivor micronesia because you have that added bonus of jeff offering food saying if you want to step down pull Pull your arm down and I love how James accidentally drops I love how Alexis drops without telling Jeff that she wanted to step down so she doesn't get the reward I love you know Jason basically asking everyone am I safe and everyone kind of crossing their fingers and saying yes you're safe only for him to fall out this is obviously the big one that Parvati wins I mean in Micronesia especially it is one of the best challenges of any season ever uh, is specifically Micronesia when it rains it pours but really every time they bring this challenge back it's so so exciting so entertaining at number two a challenge that I wish they had more often which is so fun because it doesn't just require skill and strategy but it also involves interesting social dynamics and that is touchy subjects and this is the challenge where everyone takes a quiz privately and then they have to guess who got the majority of votes and then if you get it right you basically have to chop someone's rope and if you get three chops you're out now now, this is a very fun challenge because a it requires you to basically kind of spill all the dirt on your tribe and it can get people very pissed off there's a reason it's called touchy subjects is because there are some very touchy questions and subjects in the answers you know that are given like who has no shot at winning the game who is the front runner that everyone has to get out who do you not trust with your life who do you trust with your life like all these questions that could lead to some real bickering and fighting but then the added bonus of then having to chop someone's rope if you're right so now not only are you answering this question truthfully and making this person and feel bad about themselves but then you have to go up and literally chop their rope and put them out of their misery in the game I, I think it's really a very fun challenge no matter what iteration there is because every season it's a different group of contestants
So every time you have this challenge, it's a different group of answers. It's a different type of reaction every time. And the reason they don't do it anymore is because San, San Juan del Sur, they kind of gamed it to where they were all just going to give it to Missy. And, uh, you know, I was, I was a little pissed off about it because I think they ruined touchy subjects for everyone else. But I would love to see this make a return, especially in the new era where everyone feels a little bit more pissy <laughs> than, than usual, um, especially this season, you know, much more pissy than any season we've seen in the past, like, 10 iterations of the game. Uh, I would love to see this make a return. But my number one challenge, and this is solely a personal pick, because the two times that this one has really made an effect have been two of the greatest moments of Survivor ever, um, which is from Blood vs. Water, but especially Heroes vs. Villains, which is Sumo. Now, this is a very, very basic challenge. It's two people, they're on a platform, they have these big bags, and they have to push each other off. And in Heroes vs. Villains, they have to push each other into the mud, and in Blood vs. Water, they have to push each other into the water. Now, the reason I love this challenge in both those seasons, for Heroes vs. Villains, I love it because it really brings out the villainous side of the villains and the heroic side of the heroes but it's also coming off of a losing streak for the heroes the heroes hadn't won a challenge yet and they really want to prove themselves and this is the first challenge that they win and they don't only win the challenge they dominate the challenge the villains don't score a single point and it's really fun to see like colby take down rob or see um i believe it's tom westman take down russell hance or my favorite which is james clement taking down randy in one fail swoop to where everyone on the villains tribe is saying wow you're such a hero james you're such a hero when in actuality james kind of bites back and we see this villainous side of james come out but i love that setup where it's james on one side and it's randy on the other and then all of a sudden boom james in one fail swoop just knocks randy into the mud and another one of my favorite moments is coach where coach thinks he's won the challenge and starts celebrating and having this big heroic hoorah moment only for jeff to be like Coach, you used your hands. You took your hands off the bag. And Coach p uh, gets pissed off and gives him the middle finger. And he says, point it at Rupert, not me. Point it at the pirate. This challenge just has everything. It's everything you can ask for from what is a cast of all-stars too. I think that's what makes it great too is that you have these people that you've grown up loving or loving to hate. You know, you have villains like Jerry getting you know, thrown in the mud and, and getting beat down. You have someone like Tyson getting taken down by JT from his very own season only to give him a kiss on the head because they're still friends. And then you have, you know, James and Rupert and Tom and Colby all come into play. Candace gets a big victory there. Amanda, like... Sari, Sari, who's not great in challenges, still winning this challenge, getting a point for her tribe. It is one of the greatest challenges. It has some of the greatest moments. Uh, and then when we see it again in Blood vs. Water, it's great because it's literal family members going up against each other. I mean, I think of Aris and Vetus in particular. That fight has so much built up, you know, tension from not just the game, but from childhood in that matchup where Aris and Vetus going at one another doesn't just mean a point for a tribe, but it is all this baggage from their past coming back to them in that moment to where you really don't know who to root for because it is this tense moment. And that's what I'm talking about with Sumo. It's such a simple challenge, but because of the stakes of, in Heroes vs. Villains case, knowing these characters for seasons upon seasons and seeing the heroes at their lowest needing a win against this villain tribe that that seems impossible to beat and then in blood vs water seeing these people who have very clearly rooted deep emotional relationships with one another it's always a fun challenge to see and what i love about it is that we don't see it a lot so when we do see it it really does feel like it makes its mark it feels like it's used at the right moment on the right seasons and i just like the construction of it the idea of you only have this small little radius to work with um to knock each other off and then if you end up in the mud or water that's it you get a point that's it all you have to do is get the person off and Ugh, I could just go on and on about this challenge. It's not one that necessarily comes to everyone's mind, but I think because of specifically the two iterations where it stands out the most, being Heroes vs. Villains and Blood vs. Water, it is my favorite hit challenge. Hands down, if you want a great laugh and a great just 10 minutes of your life, go watch Heroes vs. Villains Sumo Challenge one more time. It's in episode three in Randy's Boot episode. It is one of the great challenges of all time. So there you go, my top 10 challenges. Um, those are all personal picks for me, uh, but I would love to hear what your top 10 challenges are below. And maybe, who knows, maybe there's another challenge coming someday that is just gonna blow all these out of the water. Maybe someday we'll see another 11 mile hike. Maybe we'll get some more attack zones in the future. Who knows, but those are my favorites. Thank you for listening and stay tuned tune for more recipe for reality small bites our finale is coming up soon which means we've only got a few more episodes left of this before we call it a day for the season and i do think i'm going to bring these back for next season because it's been a lot of fun so thanks for listening and make sure to subscribe to the channel thanks for listening <laughs>